Aren't you guys grateful for your salvation? Yeah. Aren't you grateful that we serve a God that's good and kind and merciful? Amen. He's full of joy and love. Amen. Amen. But tonight we have a special speaker tonight that's coming in. Where's he at? Where's he? He's not here yet. <laughs> he just flew in. Hey Amen. He came all the way from Eastville. <laughs> but uh, we have Brother Bob Macy that's going to be bringing forth the word tonight. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm so grateful that I can trust certain people to come and stand behind this pulpit time after time. Amen. It's not an easy thing to stand behind this pulpit, open up the word, and preach or read or or teach the Word of God. Sometimes people don't seem to realize the responsibility that lies that every time you open up this Word and you speak God's Word into people's life, it's a great responsibility, people. But I know that Brother Bob doesn't need a, an introduction. Amen. Come on up, Brother Bob. Amen. Thank you again. I, you know, I don't take it lightly that the pastor trusts me, and I, like I tell him and Pastor Marcia, every time I'm, I'm up here, even though I'm opening up the Word to teach you, I'm always open to them correcting what I teach. So you have that freedom, always. Amen. Amen. The Word of God is is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. Amen. So what we're going to do tonight is uh, on Valentine's, we uh, <laughs> we had a, a theme to our Valentine's. Does anybody remember what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Love is in the air. Mm -hmm. Well, when I, we got home on Saturday, Saturday morning, we were sitting around and just uh, thanking the Lord for the meeting, Pastor David and Linda David this Pastor David just ministered the word so powerfully. And we started talking about this. Love is in the air. Love is in the air. And it wouldn't leave us. And uh, you have it up there, Jerry? Coming. Okay. <laughs> so we meditated on that. We shared with each other throughout the day. And the Lord was good. And I'm just hesitating right now because uh, something's coming up on, on the screen here. <laughs> A little play on words, but uh, I felt it was from the Lord. Amen. It's funny when the Lord does give me stuff, I immediately put it towards the men's ministry. See what the Lord, even if it's not my time to teach, I usually file it in my heart and my mind for the men's ministry. But this time, and there's been other times, the Lord says it's not for the men, it's for the congregation. Amen. And then, so when the Lord has me. Uh, the opportunity to speak. This is what you want. Love is in the air. And we started talking about that, and we just, and we just, we just started downloading on this. She was bouncing off of me, I was bouncing off of her. So some of this is her. And, uh, so praise the Lord. So what I attempt to do in the next 35, 40 minutes is have you appreciate being the heir of the Son of God. The Bible says we're joint heirs. In other words, we're equal. We're, we're equal with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? So, there's a lot of scripture that I went through. I know time won't allow me to go through everything, but when we do read through the Bible, if you want to turn with me, fine. If it's just a scripture that I want to reference to, then I'll just do it on my own. And then you can pay attention to me and listen. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I, I guarantee you that in the next 35 minutes, we're going to learn something that's going to make us want to dance. Amen. It's going to make us want to come in yeah. 
every time these doors open into the, the presence of the Lord. It's going to make us want to leave self at the door. It's going to make us want to leave being reserved and being all this and a bag of chips at the door because we're going to learn more on who we really are and what we really have and most of all, what we possess. And we're going to learn about something that no one can steal from you. Amen. Because it's a gift. And when you get a gift, you didn't earn it. You didn't work for it. You didn't buy it. It was presented to you. So that's what the Lord's going to remind us of being heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So Father, we thank you this evening. Lord, I thank you that every heart and ear is open, Father God, to what the Holy Spirit wants to say. And Holy Spirit, you said that you would come and be our teacher. So we're relying on you. Father, we put ourselves on the shelf and we just become the instrument that you speak through. So Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, young and old tonight, I pray right now that the, that the words of the living God would fall fresh on us. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Say it out loud. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. We're Hallelujah. Well. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to pose a question to you. And the first question I want to pose to you is a simple one. It's, what is an heir in the Bible? What does the Bible talk about us being an heir? Okay, I'm going to answer it for you. Since no one's raising their hand. The answer, one of the answers, the literal meaning of an heir is someone who has been appointed to receive an inheritance. It's every one of us if we're in Christ Jesus. That's going to be the key tonight. You must see yourself in Christ Jesus. Okay, Bob, what does that mean? You've got to be born again. You've got to be born again to receive the inheritance. See, if my father wanted to give me an inheritance, it's not good enough that my best buddy, my homeboy, my road dog, (laughs) knows me, and he's going to be in a life for an inheritance. No. you got to be the son. Okay? And that's what we're going to learn tonight. Through our sonship entwined being co-heirs with Jesus Christ, we're in line for an inheritance, church. Amen. And it's something that we just don't think about all the time. But we should be shouting about this inheritance as much as we do shout about us being born again and saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Because it's all tied in together. Amen. And we're going to learn a little bit about that tonight. Amen? An heir is a person who receives something of value from a father. And I think the greatest gift that God has given each and every one of us is exemplified in John 3.16, which reads, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, perish, but have everlasting life. Say that out loud. Everlasting life. Love is in the air. Love is in the air. Say, I'm an heir. I couldn't buy it. I couldn't steal it, although we're going to find out that in the Old Testament, they did, and God switched some things around, and I won't get too much of that, but I am going to bring that up. But as New Testament believers, I couldn't buy it. I couldn't steal it. I couldn't connive it. All I had to do is get in position to receive it. And I'm receiving it, Lord. Receiving in it, Lord. Jesus' name. In Jesus. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That you remind me you remind through, your word, through your word of John 3 16. John 3:16. Each and every one of us tonight have to know that we are part of that John 3 16. If we're going to receive and be co heirs. Co heirs, that's equals. 
With who? Christ Jesus. The one that had everything. In fact, the one that told us greater things you'll do in my name. And because we come in his name, he's telling me, don't, don't let the world talk you out of you thinking you're bigger than me. I know you're not bigger than me, but you're with me. Amen. Everything I have, you have. And because you're living in a world that's a million times worse than I am, than, than, than it is right now in the future, what am I trying to say? Jesus is saying, since Christ has been here, things have gotten a hundred times worse. And because they're a hundred times worse, and he knew what the end times were going to be, he says, greater things you shall do in my name. So that we can walk into a crowd, and if there's any sick among them, they can pull from us. Yeah, we don't have a hymn on our, or a garment, but they can, they can sense the anointing. Greater thing. They can start to pull on that anointing. We, as believers, have to know that we carry that power within us. Amen. So yeah. when Pastor says, Pastor Marcia says, we can't be walking around with our head down, looking down, being down, but we can pop our shoulders back, kick our heads up, not that we're better than you or anybody else, and we're all just in a bag of chips. No, but as believers, knowing who we are in Christ, Amen. and that Christ that dwells in us, we can do great signs and wonders. Amen. We have to be looking for that church, because the world is dying before our very eyes. Amen. So when we get exhorted or encouraged to, hey, come on, you're in the house of God. Together, let's magnify the Lord. Let's get through praise and worship and exalt the King of kings and Lord of lords. Let's just start to do it. Let's just try it. I'll be the first one Sunday. He's going to give me a dance. I'm going to try it. I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. Mm. 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 You know, I believe in God. You know, for those that don't know, I've got two hip replacements. Okay? And I believe ever since I had my very first surgery that one day the doctors are going to tell me that I've got two new hips. They're not Teflon anymore. There's no titanium. But there's bone. And there's. <laughs> There's real stuff in my sockets. Amen. And that'll help me dance. That's right. Amen. Dance. Amen. Glory. Amen. Amen. Boy, I'm putting myself out there. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's going to follow me? Amen. Are going to do a on the line here? Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, they marched before the Lord in the Old Testament. They marched through the whole city. <laughs> David even became a fool in his wife's eyes. But God saw him as faithful. God saw him as a man after what? His own heart. I want to be a fool like that. If I'm going to be a fool at all, it's going to be for the Lord. It's not going to be for man. I already, I already did that. <laughs> How many been there? I've been a fool of the world. I'd love to be a fool for the Lord. Says, yes! That's my sonship. Hallelujah. He's already exercising his inheritance. Amen. Because see, there's going to be an eternal... I'm getting ahead of my message, but I don't care. <laughs> We're going to be celebrating an e eternal Hallelujah. inheritance. Amen. An eternal inheritance. Amen. But we can also bring inheritance. We can live on that in inheritance now. Yeah. We don't have to wait till anybody dies. Right. Right. Jesus already died. Right. The price has been paid, church. Right. Right. You see, back in the Old Testament, the firstborn had to wait till the father died for him to get his inheritance. And if he messed up, like Jacob and Esau's story, it went to the other person. 
And there's several stories in the Bible where God leapfrogged over the firstborn uh -huh. because the Bible said that the, actually the firstborn would get double the inheritance mm -hmm. over the other. And because of sin or deceit by Jacob and Esau, Do you get where I'm going with this? Come on now. Yes, yes. yes. preach it. Yes. When King David was dying, I'm getting ahead of my message. I know you're going to be all messed up. But see, it's already in here. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. It's already in here. So don't I see it? Let it get in you. If it gets in you, it'll go through you. Amen. And it'll jump onto someone else. <laughs> so let it go through you. Be that child. Isn't that what electricity does, Pastor? It goes through. It goes from point A to point B. Amen. Let me be anywhere in between. Just let it be coming from him. Amen. Amen. When David was dying, his son thought that he was going to be king. I can't pronounce his name right now, but I'll look at my notes. It's Andonaho or something like that. He was already making himself king, and King David wasn't even dead yet. Right. When he found out, he was already having a feast. Uh -huh. He was already uh, having a feast with celebrants from all the, the city. They were having a big banquet. King David was dying. Bathsheba says they're having a celebration. He's already appointed himself king. And he says, no. Solomon was like the ninth born or eighth born, something like that, out of 11 or 12 sons. So see, that's what sin does. But see, we can't sin, and I want to make sure I say this scripturally, we can't sin enough to lose our inheritance. Amen. Because that's a gift. Remember I said no one can steal it? That's right. You mm. can't buy it. The only way we can't benefit from our inheritance on this earth right now is if we don't exercise our authority as a believer mm -hmm. and we let Satan come in and lie to us and tell us we're not worthy. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on now. It doesn't diminish the inheritance or the amount of the inheritance, but it doesn't allow us to obtain it because we allowed somebody to come in and steal. Yeah. What does John 10, 10 say? The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what he wants to do. But I come to give you life and life more abundantly. See, we have eternal life where everything is going to be perfect. Jason, everything's going to be perfect up there. Everything that we have ever wanted, there's not going to be any crying. There's not going to be any sorrow. There's not going to be, oh man, I, I did this to my wife and my family. I walked away. I allowed addiction to take over. There's not going to be any of that. That's right. See, we deal through that right now. Mm -hmm. And as leaders and as pastors, you try to get teaching into your life right now that's going to allow you to overcome those things so that we can live successfully right. and we can live with the gifts that our inheritance is providing for us. Amen. Okay? But we don't have to worry about the eternal. That's already a given. What we try to work with you with is in, in the natural realm right now because we can be successful with everything that we need. He, the scripture says that God has given us everything that is what? Needful for this life. Mm -hmm. Amen? Okay, so I guess that was my introduction. I went to like a third of my notes, but I may repeat myself. Hallelujah. So how many love John 3.16? Amen. Amen. That's an eye-opener, huh? The Bible sometimes uses the word error to describe us as recipients of as a gift from God. Uh, Galatians 3.23 and I'll read it for you. <clears throat> so 
Galatians 3.23. Father, thank you. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law. Talking about being not being born again. Locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. How many got the faith revealed to them? Christ Jesus. So the law was our guardian, being not born again, our, until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under guardianship. So in Christ, you are all children of God through faith. Aren't we? Yeah. We're all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. Listen to this. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor there is male or female, for we all are all one in Christ Jesus. So if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. We're going to learn a little bit about that later. And heirs according to the promise. Amen. 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 You didn't work for it. You didn't buy it. You didn't steal it. It was a free gift. But none of that came into play until we didn't get an inheritance until we became born again. But because we are co-heirs with Jesus Christ, we're heirs according to the promise. Amen. 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 So Paul's saying, so what I'm saying is that as long as an heir is underage, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time is set by the father. Well, the father has set it up for us. So also, when we were underage, we were in slavery until the elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. There we are, equal. We're adopted to, son, to sonship because you are his sons. God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba Father. So, so you are no longer a slave, but God's child. Say, I'm God's child. The word of God tells me so. And since you are God's child, God has made you also an heir. Love is in the air. God's love is in the air. Get it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what we did, huh? We were jumping around a little bit. God is in the air. It's a little play on words, I know that. But listen to what the Lord is telling us. We take this word inheritance and sonship and equalization with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, see, there's there'll be denominations, denominations saying, oh, they're they're saying they're equal to God. They're little gods. Or they're equal to Jesus Christ. Well, the scripture says I'm a co-heir. Right. Yeah. How can I be mm, kind of a co-heir? Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of righteous. <laughs> mm, I don't know. I'm kind of saved. No. Yeah. You're saved. That's right. Yeah. 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 You've got the righteousness of Jesus Christ Amen. dwelling up inside of you. That's right. Not a little bit. That's right. Now, if you want to walk around yeah. like you, you're a little saved, you think, oh, I'm saved most of the time. <laughs> I'm a, I got a little inheritance. Someone's lying to you. Yeah. Right. Someone's lying to you. Someone's got you focused on lesser than. That's right. No, we're more than. Right. Yeah. Remember those things in math? Yeah. Less than. Yeah. Greater than. Yeah. I want to be right here. Yeah. Greater than. Yeah. Because of me. Charlie, man. <laughs> no way. I made my mess. I vomited more than once or twice on that stuff. I don't want me anymore. I want the greater than. See, I was keeping myself on the less end. Sometimes even as a Christian. As a baby Christian, because I didn't understand my rights. I didn't understand the authority that I had. Honestly, until I knew 
that authority that I had in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's stand. Oh, that's for somebody. That's for those TV evangelists. Those guys, they're they're doing this. Yeah. They're less they're more than. You don't know that. You don't know that. So I had to find out, we had to find out for ourselves. I want to be more than. So you can read books. You learn to pray. You learn to fellowship. Definitely stay in church. I mean, we can't emphasize that enough. Right. You think that's old school? No, that's real school. That's right. You've got to stay right. in church. Right. Right. You cannot let your iPod, your big screen TV on Sunday mornings while you're eating your pancakes, <laughs> listening to the best preacher, because God can't use you. That's right. Or you might be able to sign a check and send it out to them. I understand that, but you're not assembling yourselves right. like the Scripture tells us to yeah. do. You want to start to congregate with people that have the same inheritance. Amen. Because if I'm not understanding my inheritance today, this Sunday, maybe my brother here, through his testimony or through his expression of worship, can, re- can remind me of my inheritance. Amen. See, if we don't practice it, it's easy to put it on the on the back shelf and we think, well, that's when I get to heaven. No, there's another inheritance, which we're going to touch on a little bit tonight, of our eternal our eternal inheritance <laughs> where neither moth nor rust nor decay can get in there and mess it up. Yeah. And certainly nobody can steal it from God. Yeah. We've got that coming. But I want it now. Yeah. I want what do me now. So I've got people to see. I've got people to visit. I've got people to talk to. Yes. I've got believers I want to encourage right. that are walking with their heads down. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's not good enough. <laughs> that's not good enough. Our lives need to exemplify the goodness of God. Yeah. How can we convince somebody that we meet on the street? Yeah. Believe in Jesus and you can just have what I have. Well, like this. <laughs> 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 oh, come on. Church. <laughs> this is the 21st century. I should be able to say, I'm going to take your family out for lunch. Right. Single mom. Meet me at the 76 and I want to fill up the gas. Amen. I got gas in my car. But I own only one car and I've got money for two gas tanks. Meet me at the 76. You see, I'm just Yeah. I'm not being silly. I'm I'm trying to express to you what we really have. Church, we got more than what we allow ourselves to believe we have. Some we're allowing somebody to lie to us. And that liar is Satan. The Bible says he's a liar, yes. he's a yes. liar of liars, yes. he's a deceitful person, and there is no truth in him. Right. But that's all he wants. <laughs> if I can just steal their faith, mm. then I can Try have the rest. Yeah. I'll get the house, I'll get the kids, I'll get the marriage, mm-hmm. I'll get the bank accounts all screwed up. I just want their faith. Yeah. If I can get their faith, what do they believe or what don't they believe? That's what I want to know. And that's what the enemy comes after, mm-hmm. church. That's what the enemy comes after. Right. You're believing for a strong marriage? Then keep believing for it. Amen. You're believing for that lost child to come back home? Then you keep believing for it. I hear testimonies after testimonies yeah. of mothers and grandmothers that have been on their hands and knees in yeah. Knee Bone Valley, as like right. Pastor uh-huh. says, right. for their children and their grandchildren. And they have seen a miracle. Amen. Amen. So keep believing, church. Yes. Don't let that slothful liar called the devil to keep us from believing. That's right. Right. See, it costs no money to believe. Mm-hmm. Our inheritance has provided us mm-hmm. with that. You know how he's provided? Faith. Amen. Right. Amen. Faith. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
Lord, it's not in my notes, but the Bible says that God has given to every man a measure of faith. Amen. You know, Pastor, coming out of the faith camp you, for years, I heard that. I mean, this goes all the way back to Echoes of Faith. We've heard that scripture. I never understood it. It wasn't until about five years ago, huh, Luke? I took it off the shelf. God has given to us each man a measure of faith. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I, I'm giving you that. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'll stand here and be corrected. But this is the way I took it. It's like 24 hours. Each of us has been given 24 hours every day. What we do with that 24 hours can make all the difference in the world. Yeah. We can get up, go to work, raise our children, and man, I'm done. I'm done for the day. Honey, you take care. Honey, you take care of the kids. I, I gotta watch a ball game or something. I just, I, I just gotta kick. I gotta chill. I'm going to my man cave. <laughs> 24 hours goes by. Guess what? He sleeps in front of the. The TV with nachos, you know. Yeah. <laughs> really? Nachos spilling all over his mouth. get up for work and he starts the whole routine again. Then there's a person, a gentleman that says, you know what? I got class today. I'm taking two college courses. So I know I've got to get home. I've got to help the wife with the kids, maybe get dinner started. So when she comes home, all she has to do is make the salad. At 6 o'clock, I'm out the door. He goes and does a couple of courses, getting himself set up for the future. Amen. Same 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Look at the difference. Yeah. Right. It's the same thing with our faith. That's right. What am I doing to feed my faith in right. that 24 yeah. hours? Right, right, right. As soon as I've got the same measure of faith given to me, then the Lord gave, gave to you. But I see you reading. I see you going to extra Bible studies. I see you at lunch. Instead of taking a nap in your truck, maybe you're hearing the word. Uh -huh. You're doing something. That's right. yeah, you're, applying you're, it. you're applying it yeah. and you're building up your faith. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'll read the word. Well, pastor asked me to teach next week, so I think I better start reading the word. Or I think I better pray and see what the Lord wants me to speak on. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm being silly, but it's, it's making yeah. sense. Yeah. Same yeah. faith. Yeah. Same faith. Yeah. Our inheritance provides us with the ultimate. Our inheritance through Christ Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost that lives within us, who is our teacher, because that's who Christ said he would send, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to send you the teacher. I'm going to send you the comforter. Mm -hmm. Well, the only one that comforts me is someone that makes sense to me. <laughs> Maybe I got a little brain. I don't know, <laughs> but he's gonna make sense. Uh -huh. His little brain until it gets bigger, right? That's a comfort to me. Amen. Okay. Amen. So praise the Lord. Amen. 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 You know what? I'm also just throw these notes away. <laughs> I, 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 I did my work. I did my work. I haven't touched my nose yet, but I'm tired. Amen. Amen. repeat myself, it's because they're coming That's up. Okay. <laughs> the heirs most mentioned in the Old Testament were principally sons. Mostly firstborn. Uh, but listen to this. That's what the Lord showed me too. <laughs> Only the sons that were born to legitimate wives mm. were in line for the inheritance. Wow. If any of those children were born through concubines were not in line for the inheritance. Mm. Wow. Right. <coughs> Louise and I have had a chance to talk to young couples in marriage. They're living together. Mm. But yet they want the blessings of God. Right. Mm. I'm telling you, and I say this with respect, and I don't know anything about anybody in this room. Mm. If you're just living together, your mate, your mate, that's right. That's right. That's right. Come on. Correct me if I'm wrong, huh? 
I'm just letting them listen. Feel the genuine. But yet you're standing the inheritance. You're waiting for the inheritance. Why aren't, why aren't young couple, why aren't things working? Because you're just living right. Mm -hmm. right. So well, I'm, 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 I'm going to try it out. See, because in this way, if it doesn't, if it doesn't work out, I, I got the back door open. <laughs> <laughs> you're already defeating yourself. That's it. You're right. right. <laughs> Behold, you're already mm -hmm. defeating yourself. <laughs> Don't leave yourself in a skin. Don't leave yourself a parachute. Mm -hmm. There is no golden parachute in a marriage. You go all the way, right. uh -huh. Amen. or don't go at all. Uh -huh. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 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 you know what you Praise God. Praise God. We've been challenged. We've been challenged not to do the same old, same old. I mean, this is a little off my notes, <laughs> but I have to go home the last few seconds and check myself out. Because at first I didn't think you were talking to me. Well, she must be talking to somebody else. You know what it, <laughs> you know what it finally sunk in? And you weren't even looking at me when you said it. You ain't all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> <laughs> but I took it personal. The good kind of person to where I had to go home and examine myself. Amen. Did we or did we not talk about it? About me. <laughs> about me. <laughs> yeah. And we're being honest. I had to go check. check. And I don't want to be like that church. Now, you know. Thank you for being honest because that's for us too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're not, we're not <coughs> prideful to say that the, the words that the Holy Spirit speaks to us is yeah. for us too. That's where it starts actually. Yeah. And you know, Pastor, you know, we have to be honest. Right. We were sent here three years ago on an assignment. And we can botch that assignment by not being an example. Mm -hmm. And we want to be that example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, church, if you don't see us all walking in like, hey man, Everything's cool today and all that. Maybe we've had a bad day, so just give us a little, a little slack. But don't keep us there, because I want to walk with my shoulders right. yeah. pulled back, my head up, yeah. my eyes open, yeah. always looking. Who can use a hug? Uh -huh. Who can use I love you, brother? I love you, sister. Amen. That's who I want to be, because that's who Christ died for. He died for us to walk in that love. Right. Amen. Yeah. So. We're not always walking in with, you know, all this love and yeah. everything. But we walk in and we step into it. Yeah. Amen. And once you step into it, it's just an automatic yeah. thing. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Ministry of Helps, uh, let me give you a little insight. I know we all have assignments on Sundays. And maybe that has a little bit to do with it. We're already focused. Right, Alfred? You're already thinking on the way what what you got to do, checking if your men have already done this or that. I know I always come up the street to make sure that that plastic thing is flying. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, so we're already.